Welcome to Papers, your personal library of research. We're very proud to introduce Papers 3 for your Mac, your most revolutionary library of research yet. When you first start Papers 3, you are invited to import your library from Papers 2. You can skip this step and start with a fresh library. If you are not a Papers 2 user, you will not be presented with this option. With Papers 3, you can sync between your Mac, your PC, and your iPad or iPhone. You can do so by storing your library in Dropbox, after which synchronization happens effortlessly and in the background. In this case, we will just get started with a blank library. We can drag and drop articles from our hard drive into the empty library. We can continue adding to our library by using the search function. You can also add content from anywhere else on your hard drive, from any of the 25 built-in repositories, or from Mendeley or Zotero accounts. By dragging and dropping repositories into your favorites, you can use these repositories in your unified search. We can now do our first search and import to our library. One new and very exciting feature in Papers 3 is that it automatically downloads the PDFs whenever possible. And Papers has become much better at retrieving metadata. Papers 3 for Mac has a very fresh new interface. We have completely redesigned Papers to bring more simplicity to your workflow. As you can see, the PDF automatically showed up now. We can immediately start reading and annotating the PDF. Any supplements that we also download to our library can be previewed from the inspector window. Now when we do another search, we can narrow down our search results by using search tokens. We can import various articles at the same time, and as you can see, Papers will attempt to import the PDF for each one of these. Using the Papers bookmarklet, we'll also import the entry into Papers. There are two ways to annotate an article, either by selecting the annotation feature in the bottom left, or by right-clicking and selecting which annotation mode to use. The color of highlights or underlines can be changed, as you were used to before in Papers 2. From the inspector window, we can discover content relevant to the article that we're reading, as well as any tweets or posts that are made related to this article. We can immediately import any articles that we find interesting. When we exit that content, it takes us back to the original article. Let's take another look at this article here and download some of the supplemental files from the web page. Many different supplemental files can be previewed in Papers 3. For example, videos, PDF files, or document files. If a supplement is in PDF format, it can also be annotated with highlights and notes. Now let's close some of these tabs that we were reading. There are different ways to view the content in your library. The column view is still available in Papers 3 as well, as is the grid view and the cover flow view. Your content can be sorted by selecting any of the column headers. Now let's select an article and read it in full screen mode. In 
the inspector window, there's a place for a very short personal description of the article that you're reading. Opening a location with a URL is treated no differently in papers than opening content in any other way. If the PDF is available, papers will automatically download it. In this case, we have supplements that are in PDF format, and as you can see, we can annotate these easily. In Papers 3, you can create smart collections that are automatically populated with articles that meet the parameters that you set. You can also create manual collections that are populated by dragging and dropping content into them. Now let's label a couple of articles with colors. Manual collections can be nested, so you can create collections within collections. We will create one more smart collection that we will populate based on a keyword parameter. As you can see, there's now only one article in this collection. But as we add this keyword to more articles, more articles will show up in the same collection. We can also browse our library by selecting authors. In the authors mode, we can select an author name and see any content that we have by this author in our library. The same is true for periodicals. In this mode, we can browse content based on the way that we've tagged the articles, whether that be by color, keyword, or by the number of stars we've given it. Again, we can import some relevant content that we're interested in based on reading this article. Now let's use magic citations to write a manuscript. We can pull up the search window with a simple keyboard shortcut of hitting Control Control on a Mac. When we find a citation we'd like to insert, we just hit Enter to insert the citation. The site keys can also be modified, depending on our needs. You can suppress the author name by placing an asterisk in front of it, or you can suppress the year by placing an asterisk after it. Comments or page numbers can also be added to the site key. Once you are ready to format your manuscript, you can choose any of the over 6,000 citation styles. And your manuscript will automatically be formatted. If you change your mind, you can always reformat it with any of the other citation styles. We have now taken you on a journey through a full workflow. From importing documents from your hard drive, to searching them from any of the built-in repositories, reading and annotating them, organizing them into collections, tagging them with colors or keywords, and eventually citing the content in your manuscript. Welcome to your most revolutionary library of research. Enjoy using papers. Thank you.